Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the BMW 3 Series E36. Initially, the body was considered to be very tough and sporty, but the new Euro and CIP rules quickly showed the strength was not sufficient to obtain good passive safety. And against the background of more modern models, the torsional rigidity of the body doesn't seem at least sufficient. Over the years, the strength of the bodies decreases greatly due to the corrosion, because the paint quality of the BMW of the 3rd series in those years left much to be desired. The 5 series E34 in this respect is much better done. Absolutely everything rots at 3 rubbles – doors, fenders, seals, interior and trunk floors, windshield frames. But the most unpleasant thing is that the glasses of the front suspension and the welding points of the side members and the engine shield side members and this rear subframe are rotten out. When buying, you need a real complete revision of the body, just like with the old Zhengli. Sometimes you can close your eyes to the dilapidated anthers of the engine compartment, but other cars cannot be restored. Even if you have your own body section, it is easier to find something livelier. And sometimes cars that look good, there can be a bunch of problems inside. The same glasses of spires and spires themselves. Many cars are painted on the outside, and nobody took care of restoring the bodies. When buying early copies before 1995, you can safely count on restoration with full disassembly, welding and repairing. Cars produced in 1997-2000s in a lively state are much more common. The quality of painting car has clearly changed, but you shouldn't count on the ideal condition in any case. The salon was once considered very good, but over the years the budget of materials it has felt. The plastic cracks and crumbles, the front panel and door cards especially suffer, but the seats are held by fellows still at last. Good salon is now a rarity. The state of all systems in most cases from frankly poor to average. Boys car, you know. Well, if the brake discs are not sharpened to the point of razor, in the best case, the cars have brake pipes replaced and the ABS restored, and the brakes themselves are native or factory ones from more powerful versions. In the worst case, the anti-rack, anti-lock braking system has not been working for a long time. There is an ASP emulator. The brakes are either worn out or zakuhoshani to the maximum. With non-native brakes and vacuum cleaner from some tour, the steering at the edge will please. The slats were rather weak initially, they often require repairs and they flow regularly. However, the reason is mainly in the style of operation. On a solid part of the cars, the equipment is also non factory for a long time. The rail from the E36 is noticeably more reliable and is almost not prone to leaks, although the knocks are not worse. And it gets one to one, only the steering tips need to be installed from the E46 again. The E36 suspension is rather weak, but even the original parts are inexpensive. Usually the suspension is kept in excellent condition even on very dead cars. Like the Salon, this is a good indicator of attitude to technology. If it frankly thumps, then this 3 rubble node was not taken care of, and if the owner even knows what it is out of order and makes plans for repairs, then most likely cuts a little. In front, the front L-shaped lever suffers. Instead of it, you can put a stronger one from the E30. Then the bulk joints can be installed from it, only more reliable. The rear support of the lever is consumable with a replacement interval of about 20-30 thousand kilometers maximum. The bolt runs depending on the type of rubber, but usually not, mu not, not much longer. The lever itself doesn't withstand our roads. The pits act destructively on it. The resource of the shock absorbers is also not happy. 40-50 thousand maximum, the lack of the anthers effect. Many owners do not bother, they go to the dead. At the rear, the reliability of the suspension doesn't cause any particular complaints. The bolt joints of the wishbones have a resource of 60-100 thousand kilometers around the city and two times less with frequent column free trips. trips. Trailing arm supports are even slightly more reliable. The numbers are not outstanding, but on begins. But against the background on the hassle with the front suspension, the rear one looks very strong. Cardinal shafts, drives, and a rear gearbox do not cause any particular complaints because they are designed for very powerful motors, and the average three rubble node is 316i or 318i. There are still enough components for minor repairs on sale, and the price doesn't go off scale. Mechanics on low-power cars also doesn't cause problems, but on the 323i and 328i, and even more so on the M3 is already in the risk zone. If the owners like to burn, then there are enough pale faults, and you need to take care of checking. And the mileage of the cars is such that often the box has already been replaced, and more than once. With machine guns, everything is a little more complicated. On the third series, there are mainly GM boxes, four staged for L30E. We installed such automatic transmissions on old engines from 1.6 to 2.8 from the very beginning of the model's release. The box is very reliable and was used in many cars, in Hyundai Opel, BMW, and Isuzu. 
Big points, they all come itself in plastic washers. Due to the design features, the box doesn't lack high revolutions and absolutely cannot stand overheating. So the condition of the radiators must be monitored carefully. Since 1993, the 5-speed gearbox ZF5HP18 has also been encountered. The car with it noticeably faster and the gearbox is more reliable. It can withstand races and even an oil change at the wrong time. But everything breaks down. The box is not very cheap to repair, but it is also repaired with, without problems, like the first stage. With runs up to 300,000, there is still a chance to get a box that hasn't been repaired, but with an already dying torque converter. But more often there are options repaired by craftsmen to death. Automatic entries are equipped only with such an automatic transmission and it withstands well those 286 and 321 for horsepower engines. Extremely rare guests on the E36 are Jetco JR501E, A5S300J, automatic machines which are found mainly on cars for the Japanese market. If you see, do not be afraid, quite a decent box, you just have to go to Japanese service for repairs. It's hard to say anything about the reliability of such an old automatic transmission, many have already gone through a couple of overhauls. But in general, such units nursed their 250-300 thousand, but requiring regular oil changes and frequent repairs of the gas turbine engine linings. It is difficult to find a contract unit, but with minimal collective farming you can make a unit for BMW from a nascent contractor, since there are a lot of Japanese boxes and they are extremely cheap. And the car with such a box rides a little worse than with its ZF. There were a lot of engine series for BMW of those years. Due to age, the general condition of most motors is extremely poor, especially there are many problems with the control electronics and cooling systems. The engine compartment speed is frankly crumbly, sensors at this age require replacement, viscous couplings fail, there is usually a lot of collective farm, and the hardware itself has a huge mileage and is pretty worn out. Even if there are overhauls, it's not a fact that they were done well and recently. It is necessary to soberly understand that the price of cars has long been lower than the price of good capital. The presence of contract units helps. Engines of the M40 series with a volume of 1.6 and 1.8 liters came to the E36 with the E30. This is a simple 812 unit, the main problems of which are the low resource of the timing belt, not the most successful lubrication scheme in the cylinder head and the cooling system. The belt needs to be changed every 40 60,000 km. If it breaks, the valves must bend. Poor lubrication of camshafts and rockers leads to a lot of wear of the timing machine mechanism and the appearance of noise. Otherwise, the problems of the motor are related to its age. Deterioration of sensors, weak plastic of the intake and cooling systems and other little things. The resource is somewhere around 200 to 150,000 km and it has long since ended. These motors were installed until 1994, you should not avoid them, but cars with them usually already ask for a landfill. The M43 series engines replaced the earlier belt motors by 1994, but they can be found since 1993 model year. The working volume is 1.6, 1.8 or even 1.9 liters. The later version is distinguished by its own control system, and not by Bosch Motronic. The timing drive is already a chain drive, and the block is unified with the one M42, M44 series motors. For this reason, the engine is often already improved. The cylinder head is covered from the M42 and turned into 140 horsepower. The block is still cast iron, the piston group is strong, and the problems are mainly with the intake and control system. The motor is generally more reliable than the older M40s and, with the exception of low power, has no particular drawbacks. On the 318i, there is a 140 horsepower 1.8 engine with a 16 well cylinder head of the M42 M44 series. In addition to a more complex and expensive timing and a smaller chain resource, it differs little from the M43. Is that the other crankcase and the oil supply system are more vulnerable? Earlier M42 were distinguished by the abundance of childhood problems. On later M44, they are practically absent. On cars with such engines, they could already burn out. On hybrid 44s are enough with a live body, especially since the engine is well boosted. On the basis of it, they made a racing versions of the S42 B20 on chokes and with a dry sump, with a capacity of about 240 to 180 liters. That 320i 328 in line 6 can be split into two generations. Earlier M50s with the cast iron rock were installed on 320 and 325i until 1993 without VANOS and until 1995 with phase shifters. Later aluminum M52 will always be with a VANOS. They were installed from 1995 until the end of the model's production on versions 320i, 323i and 328i. 
The motors of the M50 series are noticeably more reliable and are a good option for swap instead of the vegetable M40 M43, so do not be surprised at their presence under the hood of cars of later years of production. The problems are mainly age-related with the control system, the power supply system and the intake system. A long cylinder head leads to the slightest overheating, pay attention to the condition of the cooling system and to traces of gas breakdowns breakthrough in the expansion tank. More recent M52 requires a separate story. In short, there are a lot of var variants of the block. Here there is conditionally eternal nicosyl and cast iron sleeves and even alosyl. In this regard, there will be different versions of the control system and different problems. In general, the reliability of the engine is quite sufficient by modern standards, a few problematic options have long been off-fed or replaced with contract ones. And the rest of the problem is the same, the age of the newest specimens is more than 15 years old, plus a lot of collective farm in the control system, frequent annealing, not very good plastic inlet. There are still non-capital options, but there are frankly few of them. And don't believe odometers, the average mileage is actually far over 350,000 km. On this information about the problems of the BMW 3 Series E36 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.